Namaste. So this is the explanation and insights into chapter 27 of Lakshmi Tantra, which you should watch before you watch this video. It always amuses me that people watch the insights video without watching the original. How the heck are you going to know what we're talking about? Because I don't give, I can't, I don't have the time to give all the information and explain every little thing. So this is where I hit on the main points, but I don't touch all of them. So if you have any questions, you have to put them in the comments here and then I'll address them. There are plenty of things that you can ask questions about, but so far nobody has asked a meaningful question about any of the chapters. I mean, it boggles my mind because there are so many things left unexplained, so many loose ends, so many undefined terms, so many unexplained ideas. So if you're really following this, if you're really studying this, you would have really tons of questions. I don't see any. So I, you know, I don't understand people. I really don't. I don't get it, you know. I'm there hour after hour going through these chapters, looking up words in the Sanskrit dictionary and figuring everything out so that when I read it, I know what I'm talking about. Or when I give these insights videos, and I'm not just making things up, right? So I don't understand how people can hear these things and not be curious to know more. I mean, it's so interesting, you know? It's so fascinating. How could anybody not want to get complete clarity on all these ideas? It just, I don't get it. But anyway, y'all enjoy this here video. So this chapter is titled The Duties of the Adept in the translation. But actually, it spends about half of the chapter talking about Hrileka. And if you remember back in Mahashodashi Mantra series, Hrileka is a name of the Bija Hring. And Hring is really the most powerful Bija next to Aum. Huh? And actually, it stands co-equivalent with Aum, as the grantor of all desires. So this is really eulogized tremendously in, I don't know, three or four chapters so far in Lakshmi Tantra. So in the beginning of the chapter, she begins by saying, O Purandara, the Tarika Mantra, Hrileka, the Supreme Vidya is identified with me. She is my divine absolute Shakti, perpetually endowed with all my attributes. Wow. So this is really the fundamental Sri Vidya mantra or Bija. And what does Hrileka mean? Huh? I'm surprised nobody asks these questions. <laughs> it means heart fixing huh? or heart standing or I guess you could interpret it as fixing or uh, healing all the uncertainties of the heart. So I can certainly understand this from my experience because by chanting this mantra as part of the Mahashodashi mantra I mean, really, after two years, two and a half years now, chanting this mantra, I have to say, slowly, slowly, all my desires are being satisfied. And I don't mean satisfied in the sense of that I'm being given the objects of my desire, but satisfied in the sense that the desire itself is disappearing. And this is a wonderful thing because it leads to deep inner peace. 
So this peace, this shanta, is actually God. Huh? Shanta is a name of God. Shanti is the feminine. So she is goddess Shanti. She is the goddess of peace. She's also the creation. And this mantra, Hring, includes all her attributes. So this is outstanding. This is really wonderful. This makes her accessible to everybody because it's simply one letter, Hring. <laughs> Anybody can chant. Anyone can remember or contemplate her in this way. So then she goes on. This is Surya, which continuously activates the eternal force called Prana. Consider this excellent Purusha, person, as the first letter, Ha, of Hrleka, Hring. Consider its first active state, Unmesha, which embraces the three worlds and is the substratum of the entire creation to be the letter Ra. So Ra is a very interesting bija. Again, going back to the Mahashodashi series, Ra is bestowing all mystical powers. So we have Ha and then Ra. So first of all, we have a letter that embodies all of her qualities and then we have Ra, the letter that embodies all of her powers. And what's next? Panchabindu, E, characterized by the five divine functions discharged through Shakti, having the form of wonderful knowledge and successively representing the closing and opening of the eyes of the Creator. This is the eternal condition of the pair of letters E and E, appearing in the bija, hring. E, e, huh? <laughs> Closing and opening the eyes of the creator, which means the states of non-creation, non-manifestation, and manifestation. So the third letter, E, which is a combination of E and E, actually expresses the whole process of manifestation and unmanifestation of the universe. Whew. Then finally, I, who am the bestower of power upon the three worlds and am devoid of any parts, after performing all the five duties, ultimately dwell again in the divine supreme self, Vyomesha, contracting within myself the entire world of objects. And what is Vyomesha? Mm. So, ha, ra, i, mm. Vyomesha. And the five duties are creation, sustenance, dissolution, illusion, and grace. These are the five duties or activities of God in the material world. So, these all five are summed up in the last letter, Vyomesha. Mm. So, in one tiny word, actually one letter, is presented the entire sequence of creation, maintenance, dissolution, plus the drama of illusion and enlightenment and deliverance. Huh? The whole thing is summed up in one letter. This is how powerful the Vedic knowledge is. See, this is how enlightened the sages who came up with these and who practiced them, which gave them the power to write these scriptures are. So we don't see sages like that very often. Ramana Maharshi is maybe the last of them. But in this world, we have to understand the whole process of the world, the whole construction of the trap in order to free ourselves. And all that 
knowledge is contained in simply one letter, E of Hring. So what to speak <laughs> of the whole thing combined? Hring is an extremely powerful bija. And you should all chant it in some way, in some form. It doesn't really matter, you know. She goes on to explain that there are several forms. O Sureshwar, these forms of the one Tarika dwelling in Shanta, God, the one ending in Pradhan, the one ending in Visrishti, the one ending in Vyomesha, and the one ending in Vyomesha and Visrishti. These four forms bring about glorious fulfillment of all individual desires, both in this life and in the life after death. While the form that ends with Pradhan, Bindu, and Nada, Hring, brings about the unique bliss of emancipation. So here it is in one little package. <laughs> Everything you could possibly desire, both in this life and the next. Plus, <laughs> as an extra added bonus, emancipation, liberation, moksha. Uh, the end of rebirth. And so it's described in other Sri Vidya scriptures that her devotees get to take a form in her world and exist there as long as they desire in perfect happiness, in whatever form and in whatever mode of existence they desire until finally, when they're ready, they can take the always offered liberation and disappear into Brahman. Uh, and then we don't know what happens to them. <laughs> it's inexplicable. But this is very, very clearly explained in some of the other Sri Vidya scriptures, especially the ones that describe the Sri Chakra. The Sri Chakra is the uh, abode of Devi, of Shakti, which is uh, symbolized by the Sri Yantra, the diagram of uh, nine triangles. So all this is a great science, which one should delve into and inquire into, and also experience for oneself by practice, because this is the only way to really understand it. Huh? Us talking about the philosophy and the mantras and stuff like that, is that's just the appetizer. That's just the preview. Huh? That's not even the beginning of the actual benefits. I mean, having the knowledge is wonderful all by itself, but then putting that knowledge into practice and gaining those benefits is something just beyond anything that I've ever experienced. I don't know about you. <laughs> But uh, even my experience as a Vaishnava, as wonderful as that was in so many ways, you really can't hold a candle to this. This is, is beyond even that enlightenment. And also the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha's teaching is very nice, but it still can't hold a candle to this Sri Vidya. This is the ultimate of ultimates, <laughs> of ultimate ultimates. Om <laughs> Tatsa, Om Shakti Om.